Okay, okay, man. So yeah, hello, my name is Alex, and um, we didn't have the intention to go to space, but we were pulled in by a customer. Um, yeah, okay. as uh, life goes on. So um, yeah, and we even had to find a way how to manage edge deployments uh, through space connectivity. Um, oh, wait, shit. So well, so what we are aiming to do is um, we are addressing really the challenges of uh, the enterprise are facing today. It's um, cost of operations, improving uh, how they work, uh, becoming more flexible and agile, and uh, yeah, integrate uh, making all the systems that uh, they have uh, in place uh, to talk to each other and leverage the benefits. And um, yeah. What we believe um, the way to go is um, edge services. So if done right, um, if, you have, uh, if you have the proper hardware to collect the virtual agnostic hardware, to collect all the different data in all the different domains, fulfilling all the different requirements, that is even easily integratable uh, into this entire um, ecosystem, into this entire <coughs> deployment of uh, or in all the different operations with a single line of command. And where can all of them have one platform that manages all, that monitors, <coughs> monitors my edge deployments in terms of capacity, in terms of uh, data fabric, and even enforcing the KPIs uh, to, uh, to provide the really uh, the right infrastructure to, uh, to tackle all those uh, challenges. And yeah, so for our customers, we go down the road that we deploy the edge really everywhere. We do internal optimization uh, like one of the customers uh, we're uh, we engaging with, unfortunately, this project is on the NDA, so I'm not allowed to tell that uh, the company here we're talking about is Valmont from US. But um, yeah, we have started with them to monitor, to bring uh, to bring insights into their operations. Um, you might see here all those big steel components. <coughs> those are actually <coughs> the poles for street lights. And uh, <coughs> based on the discussions we had, and also based on some 5G, <coughs> 5G activities they were driving, we started building together a smart <coughs> light pole, um, integrating different sensor capabilities, integrating different uh, types of devices to really capture uh, all the environmental data that are relevant there. So to also enable different use cases. It even, go, it even goes that far <coughs> that we enable them to, <coughs> to monitor road infrastructure components and elements. All this went easy as long as we stayed <coughs> uh, where we felt comfortable um, uh, around, uh, around the place where we operate. But uh, yeah, as life goes on, we got to pulled in into, the, into a project to monitor exactly this in Australia. So yes, we thought Australia, advanced country, we shouldn't have any issues. And then we checked a little bit. Yeah. Australia covers 99% uh, of, uh, of their uh, population with their mobile networks, but only 27% of landmass. They even cover a couple of highways, but by far not all. So this is, yeah, this, uh, this was the, uh, the challenge we started facing uh, when engaging with them. And yeah, we had to find our way. So when it comes now to monitoring um, their performance in, uh, in their operations, it's quite easy to know. We have all the different uh, connectivity technologies where we can interconnect the systems with the, also, with the business, also with the business systems. But it was far uh, trickier when we got into the field uh, in Australia, in the middle of nowhere, where we don't have, so, sorry, I have to <laughs> walk on the road, where we don't have, where we didn't have the right connectivity to control the edge, to, to control the edge, to get all the data out of that, to monitor the road infrastructure there. So yeah, the way we went and we decided to go is to use satellite connectivity. Um, we used, uh, we met um, at Viva Technology, the Swiss company Astrocast, uh, with uh, whom we started a collaboration to really get the data out <coughs> of our edge devices there, to provide them the insights and to share with all the relevant people there. So, and then the challenge came up, the next challenge came up is we had connectivity windows twice per day of half an hour. So, or not really that much time to, to set up everything, to upload everything. So we utilized our edge to really pre-process the data as much as possible uh, at the edge um, and transmit then only text messages back and forth to set the status of uh, the actual, um, yeah, the actual status of the infrastructure and to also enable additional microservices 
by just typing <coughs> a small message. And the next one is, yeah, real time means 15 minutes delay. So whenever the satellite comes up, only 15 minutes after I get my data in. So for mission critical applications, it's certainly not the right technology, but I think they are yeah, far better technology suited for that. So yeah, with this, we have helped our customers to really, our customers to introduce new services, to become more agile and more, agile and more reactive and more reactive to changing customer requirements and to be able also to provide uh, uh, to, uh, to, 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 to be able to offer proactively the additional services to our customers. And with all that, we have increased the profitability according to the Poland organization by 300,000 euro per year. So yeah, we do this not only to monitor infrastructure and uh, operations and industries, but we are totally industry agnostic. So one of our biggest deployments we have actually here in Nordics, where we monitor our <coughs> sewage system infrastructure. Uh, to determine uh, the water level in sewage systems, plugging in sewage systems, or even uh, water flow. And yeah, some of our customers and partners we're working with, you might recognize a couple of logos here. So that's us in a nutshell. Great, and thank you, Alexander.